So did you play the microphone? Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is just make a call out to them to see if we can get them. Hello everybody. I'm just making a call out. I'm trying to get all the people in those two galleries to come in. But you know, they love art and they won't walk away from that beautiful art. So um, if you're in the other two galleries, please move into gallery three. I don't think they heard a word, but. So we're gonna do some more hurting. So thanks for your patience. Okay, we're going to get started. Are you okay, Suzanne? Do you need? Okay. So we, we don't have everyone in the room yet, but thank you for being in the room. We really appreciate it. Um, I think people are gradually going to file in. For those coming in, there's lots of room up here at the front. This is all the chairs we have. I'm sorry, but we have more benches. We'll be bringing things in. And um, if you're young and able, feel free to, free to sprawl on the floor. It's been done before, um, and it's fine with us. So, okay. Uh, my name's Sharon Godwin. I'm the director of the Thunder Bay Art Gallery. I want to thank you so much for coming out tonight. It kind of feels like we're back to normal. When we have the chairs full and we have people sprawling on the floor, it feels normal. So thank you for that. Um, it's a beautiful, you know, sometimes in January, it's a little bit of a gamble to do an event in Northwestern Ontario. But everywhere else in the country, apparently it's snowing, but we have the most beautiful night, beautiful clear sky. So I think it was meant to be that we would all be here tonight. Um, as I said, we're really happy to be open after the pandemic years. 
we appreciate all of you taking the time to come out to see these three new winter exhibitions and support and celebrate the artists whose work is on display tonight. So thank you for doing that. Now, um, I want to acknowledge <clears throat> that the gallery is located on the traditional territory of the people of the Fort William First Nation, signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850. We also acknowledge the contributions of the Métis people in this area, for sure. We're grateful and inspired to do our work in the safe shadow of Anemkiwaju. Many of you will know Anemkiwaju as Mount McKay. And to always remember and consider what it means to be located on this land. I hope you'll see through the thought and the work behind these three enter winter exhibitions, um, evidence of the kind of work that we're committed to doing at the gallery with the artists across Turtle Island from Northwestern and Northeastern Ontario and from Thunder Bay and from Fort William First Nation. And by bringing this work and these artists together to create it, to create in what I think is a really interesting and natural way. So that's what we're about and that's the work that we continue to do and um, we appreciate your support of that work. So we have many things to share with you tonight. Um, I wanna make sure you're comfortable because there's gonna be a bit of talking, just so you know. Um, if you need to get up and stretch or you wanna walk around or as I said, sprawl, feel free anytime during the presentation. We just want you to be comfortable here at the gallery. For those of you in the back, there's all these really good seats up here in the front. And you're more than welcome to come on up and, and uh, even later if you're starting to feel tired. Um, here's what's going to happen tonight. I'm going to speak a bit about the wonderful um, Northwestern Ontario Now juried exhibition, uh, which is in the Too Far Galleries, which is why we couldn't get people in here because the work is so wonderful. Following this, you're going to hear from our curator, Penelope Smart, as she introduces Caitlin Bird, who is the gallery's collection, collections and curatorial intern, and the curator of the beautiful exhibit um, in the front lobby called Legends of the Flowers. You're going to hear more about that exhibit from Caitlin. After this, Penelope will introduce Jason Berg. Barg, sorry, Jason. Jason is the creator of the work that you see around you and in amongst you. And um, he's going to give a talk. And it's a very rare opportunity for you to hear directly from the artist. Um, and I think you'll enjoy that. We should be done by 845. We should. I'm just going to say that. Depends how many questions you have of the artist and how it goes. Um, after that, we invite you to stay as long as you'd like. We want you to chat with the artists, um, look at the exhibition some more, and we have some refreshments in the meeting room as well. We're also live streaming the event tonight. So it's interesting because we have all this equipment and it's hidden back here and it's just so smart of everybody to hide it. But um, I want to thank the two gallery staff in particular who are making the live streaming possible. So Evelina Sacchetti is our tech genius. Now she's hiding, so you can't see her. You've got to wave, put your hand out. Evelina is here. She is such a genius of technology. She, she's so calm about it all. So I want to thank her for making the live streaming possible. Um, also, the people that were watching, and I, I should shout out, where are they? Hello, everyone out there. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> so um, the people that are watching from afar had a chance to see a walkthrough of the exhibits. So we have a wonderful other staff person, Taylor Anderson, who is our social media coordinator. And she made a walking tour of the shows yesterday so that those people who are coming in remotely at least know what the rest of us are seeing. So I want to thank Taylor and Evelina very much for making this 
technology wonder occur? I also want to thank the Ontario Trillium Foundation who provided funding for us to buy all this equipment. Come and look at it. Like it's really, there's a lot of stuff back here. And to employ Taylor to do the work. I also want to invite, or I want to welcome some very special guests that you are going to meet a bit later. Uh, we're so honored to welcome Elder Mary Lorraine Badaman and her niece, Melissa Lowe, and there are other family members. Welcome to all the family. I haven't met you all. They've traveled from Whitefish Bay First Nation, Lake of the Woods, to be with us tonight. Mary Lorraine and Melissa and the family have a very special connection to the uh, beaded breech cloth in the front lobby. Now, I don't know if you really would have seen it on your way in because people rush right in. But in a few minutes, Caitlin Bird's going to tell us the story of that exhibit and the connections that um, Mary Lorraine and her family have with it. And it's just a fascinating and very special story. So thanks for being here. Also, a very special welcome to Jason Barg, who's traveled up from Toronto. He was here yesterday to finish installing his exhibit. We're so thankful to Mary Lorraine and Melissa and Jason for traveling to Thunder Bay in January. And I wonder if you would help, uh, help me welcome them to Thunder Bay. Thanks for being here. Now, let's talk about NWO Now, the juried exhibition in the far two galleries. So this is the first juried exhibition the galleries had that we've organized since 2018. The time lag is mostly due to the impact of COVID, um, to the lockdowns that occurred, and all the rescheduling. Try not to remember what that was all about. It's all behind us now, we hope. The galleries committed to organizing exhibitions like this to give artists the opportunity to create new work and submit it for consideration of a to a professional jury. And honestly, as happens every time, we are always overwhelmed by the number of artists working in the north of, the, north of this province and by the quality of that work, including all of you out there in the hinterlands. Thanks for being here. Um, we're impressed by the variety and the quality of the work in the show. We want to congratulate the artists for the fine work. And I'd like you to ask you all to do that. Let's tell them what we think of the work that they've submitted in this show. So So there are lots of artists in the show from Thunder Bay and from Fort Wayne First Nation, but we also have artists from the following places, and I want to give a shout out to them um, because some of them are watching us. So artists' work is here from Sault Ste. Marie, Atacokan, Balmertown, Kenora, White River, Niebing, Kaministiqua, Rossport, Timmins. And I know at least one artist who's right now in Key West, Florida. She doesn't live there, but she's there. I wonder why. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? <laughs> I want to give tremendous thanks to our jurors, Anong Beam and Maria Hutfield, for taking on this arduous task, uh, looking at 218 works of art submitted by 98 artists. Imagine that. That's a lot of art production in this, this province, North province. Um, and they've chosen 72 works by 60 artists in the show. You know, we usually do a People's Choice Award. I think we'll have to, we forgot. We're out of practice. We'll have to do that. And people, when they're choosing their favorite, they always say to me, well, I can't just pick one. And I say, how do you think the jurors feel? You know, to be able to actually have to choose. So I want to thank Anong and Maria again. I hope you're watching from afar. Um, it's, uh, it's amazing, an amazing task that you took on, and we at the Art Gallery really appreciate that you did this for us, so thank you. And to the artists who took the leap to submit their work, even if it wasn't included this time, because there's always another time, 
um, thank you. Please keep making your art. So we are able to provide a small artist fee to all the artists in the show. So those of you who are here tonight, if you want to drop by the front desk, there's a little check waiting for you. Um, and those who aren't here, you can expect something in the mail from us later this week. Next week, I guess. Yeah. Um, I want to just acknowledge the gallery staff who have worked so hard, uh, first of all, to encourage artists to submit for this show. In particular, Cynthia No and Caitlin Bird, they spoke to many, many artists and they um, assisted them, they gave them information, they made YouTube presentations about how to submit your work, how to fill out the forms, and I, a lot of the artists said it was really helpful. So thank you to um, Cynthia and Caitlin for taking that on, we really appreciate it. And to organize all these exhibits that you see, there's a, you know, there's a few people who work here, it's not a lot, but I think there's eight of us, and everyone has a role to play um, toward making these exhibits happen. So I wanna thank all of the staff. Um, in particular, I wanna well, or mention uh, curator Pen Penelope Smart, Megan Ely, our registrar, and the installation team, are, we have the best installation team in Canada. We do, we know that. Yeah, <laughs> um, and that is Megan and Penelope and Caitlin, but also Damon Dalma, Trish Roy, and Damian Rivers Moore. Um, Kate, yeah, Caitlin and Cynthia also help. So I also want to acknowledge Suzanne Plesh and Taylor for all their marketing efforts. And um, yay! Okay, I like clapping. <laughs> And then um, Camilla Westerback, Courtney Davis, and Katie Poirier as well. And there are others. Okay, so I'm almost done. I want to acknowledge our funding agencies that make it possible for us to do this work. City of Thunder Bay, Ontario Arts Council, the Canada Council for the Arts, Canadian Heritage. And we have many individual donors and members and board members who help us. So thanks for paying attention to me as I waxed on about what I think is one of the, you know, really best shows we had in a long time. All three of these are great, but I was specifically talking about the jury. And now I'd like to introduce the gallery's curator, Penelope Smart, to talk about the other two wonderful exhibits. And I want to thank her as she comes up, come on up, for her work and her vision. This is her work, organizing and presenting these exhibitions. So welcome, Penelope. All right, oh, thank you, Sharon. Wow, um, this is my first time being curator um, when a juried show happens, and I'm just so blown away and looking out over um, all the artists who are part of that show who, who are here. I just wanna give a shout out to you and your work. It's so beautiful, um, it really did, uh, it really was hard um, for the jurors, I, I know that. I wasn't part of the, the jury selection, but I know it was hard. Uh, for the jurors to choose and I just want to congratulate all of you because it really does really does represent a beautiful picture of uh, Northwestern Ontario now 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 as we all been, <laughs> we've all been saying for so long so congratulations to, uh, to everyone here and to everyone I'm finally gonna look at the camera properly congratulations to everyone um, joining us tonight from live stream who are artists who are attending that way tonight um, it's really special and it's really exciting. I think we want to, I want to clap again because I, I just think it's really, it's really important to acknowledge you. Yeah. Can you read what the jury said? I oh, sure. Yeah. So happening live, live from Sharon, uh, Sharon's desk. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to read the, the statement from the, from the jurors. Um, it, is, it is on the wall in there, but I'll read it out for everyone to, to hear. So, um, quote, it was so beautiful to see so many different expressions from emerging and established artists. The love of the natural beauty of the North was evident, and we sought to choose works that celebrated the region and community, as well as the skill of the artists, and it was challenging, and we had some hard decisions to make, but the resulting exhibition is a beautiful view of the North, its people, land, nature, animals, um, all through the artist's eyes. Um, end quote 
from Maria uh, Hupfield and Anong Beam. So, all right. So yeah, and, and thank you, Sharon. Okay. Well, as, as Sharon mentioned, my name is uh, Penelope Smart. I'm the curator here at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery, and I do have the the pleasure of introducing Caitlin Bird um, to you all tonight. Um, Caitlin is a colleague and a friend who is opening her first solo project here at the gallery tonight. And she's sitting up here with um, very special guests who, are, who have made that exhibition possible in ways that Caitlin will tell you about. So it's very, uh, it's exciting to stand here before you and to introduce Caitlin. Um, so it's her first solo project opening here at the gallery. Uh, Caitlin is a curator and a bead worker who has been part of our team as a curatorial intern since last spring and we're lucky enough to have her around a little, lo a little younger, longer yet. Caitlin holds a BFA in Museum Studies from the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe. Recent projects include Daco Benawaswin, Baby in a Cradle Board, uh, which was here at the gallery last year, as well, uh, and as well she has been part of the curatorial team for numerous projects, big and small, here at the gallery over the past year. In Legends of the Flowers, she reveals a deep sense of curiosity, connection, and responsibility to people and their stories. And by people, I should say the, the, the four women <laughs> um, and their relations who are sitting here. Um, a deep responsibility to, to people and their stories. And there is a real sense of warmth in the way she works. And I know this because I work with her. Um, and as you may have uh, noticed, the color, uh, and, and as the color on the foyer wall might suggest, she has a very special relationship her, of her own with the color pink. Please welcome Caitlin Bird. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Penelope. Um, good evening, and thank you guys all for being here. My name is Caitlin Bird. I'm from Not Coming Guadian First Nation, um, otherwise known as Whitefish Bay First Nation. Um, so I would like to thank you guys all for being here tonight. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to acknowledge um, <laughs> uh, Mary, Lo Mary Lorraine Mandamin, uh, Melissa, Roanna, and Jazan, who have come all this way from Whitefish Bay First Nation. They are the granddaughters to Papa Masaga and Ogama Manasik, the grandfather you see standing in the foyer. <laughs> Oops. Um, this project is very near and dear to me. I remember a few years ago, I seen that beadwork printed on a tote bag from the Kenora Museum, and I was, I was shook. I wanted, to <laughs> I wanted to know more, and I wanted to learn the history of it, you know, if that existed in a database. Um, fast forward a few years later, I had gone to my reserve for a cultural um, camp, and I had met Elder Mary Lorraine Mandamin, um, and immediately, you know, upon hearing who I was and who my family was, she had shared um, that she knew who my great-grandfather was, Moses Bird. And I had never met Moses Bird, but I've heard stories about him. And she had said, uh, your, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, was a Shka Bay, was a ceremony helper for her grandfather, Papa Masaga. He prayed for, her, prayed for his pipe and drum. And um, it was there when I was at her house in her living room that I seen the portrait of her grandfather wearing that very beadwork I seen many years ago. So tonight I wanted to honor the family of Papa Masaga, uh, more specifically to celebrate uh, Bella Roy Ogema Benasik, the bead artist who made that breech cloth in the foyer. Um, she left a powerful legacy. Uh, her art carries stories, wisdom, and is one of the greatest acts of love. Um, Thank you to the curatorial team, Penelope, Megan, Cynthia, uh, my mom, Barbara Ann, <laughs> for your insight, your brilliant ideas, and your support, sharing as well, um, as well as the uh, uh, staff here at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery. Thank you guys so much. Um, lastly, I want to acknowledge William Esquega, a language speaker who gifted the name Wabigwani We Adijukan, 
Legends of the Flowers. Miigwech, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, bonjour. Uh, my name is Jazan Banting, Mama Gwebnasik Indigena Cause, Wapsamung and Dunji, Mang and Dotem. I am here with my mother, my grandmother, Mary Lorraine Mendamin, and my Kukum's niece, Melissa. And I would just like to thank the Thunder Bay Art Gallery staff who invited us here tonight to this exhibition, as it's an honor. It's an honor to be here and to have the picture of my great great grandfather, Bay Bama Sege be displayed here at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery. In spirit, Bay Bamasege and his wife, Bella, are here with us tonight. Before I forget, uh, I also want to honor the fact that Bay Bamasege's father, who was Kawana. Much of us in the family have continued on with the legacy that Bella has left with the arts of sewing, beading, and much more. As for Kawana and Bay Bamasege, their legacies have been pa passed on through the traditional drum and the pipe that they've once carried. My grandmother, Mary Lorraine, now carries the traditional items passed down by my great-great-grandfather, which will continue to be passed down through, through the generations in our family, as long as the sun shines and the river flows. Miigwech. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Jeslyn, Caitlin, and Mary Lorraine um, for that. And I encourage everyone to take a, a, a very um, heart-led look at the beadwork, the breech cloth out in the foyer. All right, I, mean, I am a really lucky person tonight, not only to stand before all of you, so many artists, um, in so many different ways and so many different mediums but i also get to introduce not only caitlin an awesome person but also jason um berg who's also an awesome person so i'm going to do that now uh jason where is jason where are you oh, okay there he is he's at the back he's going to be up here soon um Jason Barrick is a registered member of the Métis Nations of Ontario and serves their community in an, in, as an Indigenous activist, curator, edu educator, and, in dis and interdisciplinary artist. Now, Jason got here late Wednesday night, and he's been installing um, all day Thursday and today, and so the room we're in right now is, is uh, Jason's artwork. And just a few things um, I wanted to share about Jason after spending only uh, two days with them. Um, as, you'll, as you'll hear in, a, in just a minute, he does balance uh, many roles, ambitions, and projects. But conversations with Jason don't feel rushed. Um, he, has, uh, he has a very natural gift of giving time and attention to others. Um, he's also someone who uh, it's a joy to receive emails from. Logistics can bring a smile to your face. Just email Jason Park. <laughs> And one final thing, this is sort of for the local crowd. Um, Jason is based in Toronto and a city person these days, but he does describe camping as staying at the Ramada Inn. <laughs> All right. Um, this is Jason's first exhibition in Thunder Bay. And um, as a leading artist who's been creating work for more than 25 years, this survey exhibition feels like a welcoming of a new but oddly familiar friend, a visitor. Uh, that you've been waiting for and when you open the door there's a burst of color energy and possibility Th this is a feeling that for me can only be described as we're happy you're here <laughs> the title of the show to us to us uh, means a path or a gap amongst the trees in Cree and when I was chatting with Jason about what that title meant to him he said it means to follow or receive what is offered to us and to work with what's, to work with what's already there. I like a glass of water. <laughs> so in thinking about that, yesterday, um, he took a photo of a grove of birch trees that's just beyond me in this wall. If you were to knock out this wall, you would, you would see those see that group of trees and from this group of trees sprang up this new work which we're going to hear more about 
from him, and it's now not only sprung up, but sort of rooted in this uh, room as part of the show. And I just think that's a beautiful way to kind of metaphor for what he said about the title. And um, for me, as curator spending time with, with Jason, it feels as if um, his creative process carries a message that no matter where you are, there's a place to create from. There's a way forward. There's a path or gap amongst the trees. Uh, Berg is a talented academic and researcher. They graduated from Concordia University with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and Master of, Fine, of, Master of Fine Arts from Rutgers University and uh, is currently enrolled as a P in a PhD program um, at Monash University. And currently, um, he also teaches at an, as an assistant professor in Indigenous practices in contemporary painting and media art at OCAD University. This exemplifies uh, their commitment to community, the end. Um, oh, an example, like, not only doing all of that um, uh, academic stuff <laughs> as part of doing, as part of all of that, um, he uh, is a founder of the Shuskateo Collective uh, for the Métis, um, for Métis art, Arts and Artists, which is um, the Métis Artist Collective. Um, mover and shaker, I guess you would sum that up um, as. So as a visual artist, Jason pushes the digital, uh, digital interventions in drawing, painting, and new media as we can see all around us. And his work has been exhibited nationally, internationally, and finally at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery. On top of all of this, and we'll hear more about this right now, uh, Jason is a fashion designer who has a super fresh fashion line um, Google it, <laughs> which is connected in really beautiful ways to the very works in this room. Please welcome Jason Berg. Thank you so very much, Penelope, and, and everyone here in Thunder Bay. It's been a real honor. Everybody's been so generous and kind and, and incredibly welcoming. So I'm just, it's, it's such an honor to be here as a visitor in these lands. I'm humbled, <laughs> so thank you. All right, so this, these are my feet. These are my feet in Mexico. Yeah, I'm a bit of a colorist and I actually really love this, this orange blanket I had to buy. I think color really is what's driving me in my process. So to advance this. Right here. This one right here. Okay, perfect. So once again, I acknowledge that I'm a visitor in these lands. I acknowledge the, the land and, and the First Peoples. Um, I'm Cree Métis from Saskatchewan, from Treaty 6. So my cookum or my grandmother, she was born in Moon Hills otherwise known, uh, well, it's part of a Muskeg Lake Cree Nation. Um, she had eight kids up in Big River, Saskatchewan, and then I was raised in Prince Albert. So I come from a great, a great family. I'm really honored to be Doris Lanigan's son. She's a senator for the Métis Nations, and she's been doing this volunteer work for over 15 years. So yeah, that's home, Treaty 6, Prince Albert. And you know, while we have the map up, maybe I'll talk about how I got my spirit name but if I walk away from the mic, you won't hear me. Um, so Raymond Ballantyne gave me my spirit name, and my spirit name is Miko Pisunapia, which means Red Thunderbird. And I, in relationship to what's in space here, I want to also acknowledge a great artist from these territories, which is Norval Morriso. And so Norval was a great copper thunderbird. And you know he impacted so many, even just by his work. And I had the good fortune to drive Norval to his last exhibition in New York City. Greg Hill from the National Gallery called me up and he said, Norval's not well, but he could travel by vehicle. Would you drive him? And I was, I asked, I was working at the Center for Indigenous Theatre in Toronto at that time. And I asked my boss and she gave me permission. And so she, uh, so I drove Norval and I spent that time with him. And um, when I came back, is this on a timer? I think it's moving. It might be moving. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe that's just me. But uh, maybe that's me. That, that's the great spirit telling me to move forward. Wrap up this story. Um, so, um, 
So yeah, so, so I spent that time with Norvell, and it was really amazing because when we came back into the city, some of you may or may not know Michelle LaValle. Um, she was a young Anishinaabe curator at that time. She was doing her first curatorial debut at A Space during Imaginative. And so I said, Norvell, would it be okay if we popped in to say hello and honor this young person? And he was more than generous, so we went. And you know, it was awesome because some of the great powers in Indigenous curatorial practices at that time were also there to support Michelle. So people like Greg, no, Greg wasn't there. Um, S Stephen Loft, who's now at the National Gallery. Um, Kathy Maddies, who was a great Métis curator. Um, yeah, Gerald McMaster was also there. He's, he's a great Cree curator. So we were all around the van and we got to spend this time with Norvell and little did we know that he would pass three weeks after. So then fast forward a couple of years, I was given another spirit name and that spirit name came forward as I mentioned from Elder Raymond Ballantyne from Pelican Arrows, which is just north of Prince Albert. And um, he said, I really feel Norvell's spirit. And so your name is here. And, and he gave me Miko Pisunapio, which is Red Thunderbird. So, you know, I think about that because of um, my journey in art. And we'll talk more about how Norvell is one of the many influences in my practice. Color is obviously medicine, and so I use that thoroughly. Technology is also one of my tools. I think conceptually that's the greatest bundle that I can carry my ideas. But I think the medicine that I'm also activating is innovation. I'm also from the Wolf Clan, so I think that some of the work that I'm charged to do is to go out from the pack and find new information and bring it back to my people so that we can all advance. So technology is really driving um, my practice. So in 2012, I did a residency in Melbourne, Australia, and um, laser cutters were just really coming into that kind of space where they were being integrated into universities. They were one of the first schools to have a laser cut machine and it belonged to the School of Architecture. So even their students who were doing a PhD in the visual arts didn't have access to that machine, but because I was considered a visiting scholar, they gave me that opportunity. So I worked with a team to scrutinize all of my materials and they trained me on the machine and literally like, within hours of those things being cut, they were being installed in the exhibition. So that whole process took about three months in training. So I really carry those, those lessons and those teachings into advancing the other things that I'm doing in space and some of the things you see here. So what you're looking at is the nomadic bounce and their traces of, um, of those first laser cut pieces. So yeah. If I go here, you'll see the thunderbolts down. That would have been from the original installation. The other image that you're looking at is um, a reconfiguration. So yeah, it's taken on kind of site specificity. Um, the, so indigenous fashion uh, just came down. It was an exhibition up in Santa Fe. I believe they're just deinstalling that right now. So what you're looking at is one of my garments in front of a Thunderbird wing. Once again, acknowledging my spirit name as well as other influences such as Norvell. The work you're looking at behind me is a, is a laser cut painting. And so what you're looking at here on screen is what happened in my studio after I came back from Puerto Rico. I did an artist talk there and then I came back and I had been in the middle of trying to resolve this painting. And, and after that walk in the jungle with all, like there was, a, a number of waterfalls. It was just really, really such an incredible day. I came back and within hours I resolved probably like 25 feet by, by four feet. And that's what you're looking at here. So um, Penelope quickly spoke to what it is we're looking at. So we, we projected an image and Taylor was so gracious to collaborate with me. Yeah, that was really awesome. I really appreciate it. She, Taylor, like, you're, you're just as much a part of this installation as I am because we really had to problem solve. This is the second time I've used these pieces to do an installation, but what you're looking at is literally the trees behind this wall. 
And so when we think about place and we think about time, we're in 2023. And so if you were to add up all the single digits in 2023, they equal seven. And then I think about the sacred number of seven and the seven teachings. So we're looking at a group of seven teachings. And I really actually loved Caitlin's um, interpretation of the work. And maybe at some other time, she'll, she'll spend some time with you and she, she'll tell you about what she sees. But to me, I really feel like um, that's what art does. It just flows through us and new stories come forward. And I actually really relate most to, to your interpretation, so I thank you for that. Norvell Morisot. So um, what we're looking at in the latter is, is a, a copper thunderbird and it's also a red thunderbird. So what I do is I carry knowledge forward. And so I'm honoring Norvell as well as honoring my spirit name. Um, we're, what the, the, the cut is, the laser cut, it's a digital drawing of the negative spaces between one of Norvell Morisot's um, Thunderbird drawings. Really, the evolution of this piece came from a previous piece, which is Oyasiwiwina, which means the law. And um, that, that acknowledges a tipi and the traditional values that are holding our communities together. Alongside a Bob Boyer. So this work, Bob Boyer was a great Métis um, painter. Um, he, he actually died during powwow. He's a great dancer and celebrated those things through his work. So it's a great honor to present this work right now at the Remy Modern in Saskatoon. That was um, curated by Tara Hogue, another great Métis curator. So yeah, this is that work again, Oyasiwiwina, and I love that syllabics is circular. We're not linear thinkers. So Alex Janvier, he's another profound artist. I really feel like He's an orator. What he offers us is so original. It's like its own, it's, its own visual language. So I've had the good opportunity to work with him a number of times, and um, he's a great inspiration. Rita Latonde is another. These are some of my inspirations or people I reference in my work. Rita Latonde, she, she's um, Indigenous from Quebec. I, don't, I can't remember which nation she's from right now. But um, she's always been a great inspiration. And she lived near me in Toronto. And I loved, like one time I went into the grocery store and she was probably 75 and she had like green phthalo underneath her nail. So it was so great to see her still painting and see her out in the community. But definitely someone I've always had a, a huge, huge respect for, for her creative outputs. And then once again, like, I'm just so grateful for how my dreams have come to reality. This work, I'm not sure if it's still up, but it, it was at McMaster University. So there we see Senator Doris Lanigan for the Métis Nation, my mom, in front of my work beside a Rita Latonde. So my mom's pretty awesome. <laughs> she taught me how to draw. She taught me how to sew. So this would have been Norvell um, at, at, at the Smithsonian in New York. One of my favorite pieces is a big drum. Um, it was an awesome time. Um, he came with a healthcare worker and, you know, when I came, um, she just really wanted to, I think, you know, she thinks like a, a, a medicine person. She just really wanted to rush him through the exhibition and get him back to the hotel. But I really sent something different in Norvell's spirit. So I was really happy that I was there to be able to walk him through that show and give him that moment and give him the time he needed in front of, of his work. So yeah, this is one of my favorite works by him. A big, beautiful drum. And this work too, it, it's, um, it's a, I see it as a creation narrative. This big thunderbird on top of the world protecting us all. Um, this hung at the Indigenous Inuit Art Bank, right above where I had my first solo exhibition when I was 30 in tw the year 2000. Um, yeah, an amazing, amazing, amazing composition, very large. Um, and to me, when I think about all of those things, I think about the connection we have to each other and all of those 
ancestral spirits that carry us forward. So here we're looking at a thunderbird. And so in some of my work, like I mentioned, I'm referencing other artists. And so um, when we look at the latter piece, we see these laser cuts and there it's literally the negative spaces between the thunderbird wings, the feathers. And then that, those, those negatives were also used to make these paintings. So that's a bit about process. This is the install that happened at um, Toronto Art. This is the second time this work has been installed. So yeah, this work too is moving forward. I'm doing a collaboration with Dr. Eliza on a pair of shoes that's gonna launch in the very near future. So yeah, this is a work near the back. I think about, um, I, don't, I can't remember the name right now, but um, it really references my family's history with trapping in the north. So my mom would spend like up to five days with her father out on the trap line. Um, formally, I think about um, how challenging it actually is to resolve a collage. So this is my, my kind of answer to resolving collage. There's five different paintings involved in this one installation. And when I think about um, the, the, the mechanism of presentation, um, it's really about relationships, support mechanisms. We're being supported by the earth and we support each other. I, when I travel, and I travel a lot, um, I, I continue to paint um, in these books, which inform other paintings. Now we're moving into kind of my relationship to fiber arts. And of course, everything indigenous um, inspires me, but I'm Métis and I really try to hold true to honoring my people's stories. So we have living relations in Muskeg Lake Cree Nation as well as Mistawasa. So I, I, I tell Cree and, um, and Métis stories. And yeah, there's just so much, so much beautiful things. I'm really interested in geometry. So geometry literally translates to earth measurement. Geo is earth. Metric means measurements, so I'm really interested in those conversations about our relationships um, that are pre-modern. So modernist thought really stripped back geometrics away from their values. So like when we think about a triangle, that could, that could reference or acknowledge a mountain. So, oh, we, we skipped pretty fast, but you, get, you, get, you got the end. <laughs> How about that? We'll take it back to the front. Sorry about that. So yeah, in Pactun, um, this is kind of a, the segue from the kind of overlap that's been happening in my, my visual art career and where, I, where I'm going in fashion today. So um, horsehair has really become pretty signature in my, my fashion line. Um, but we look at these medicine water um, paintings like fringe, fringe and, and like gravity, I think, really play a big role in dynamics in fashion. Movement is a really big thing. So here in this work, um, we're looking at leather and horsehair. Um, and yeah, it references a bundle. So then when I think about fashion, I think about like people like Darcy Moses. Some of you may or may not know Darcy Moses, but he's kind of an old G, an OG of like Indigenous fashion. I just had the honor to see his work at Indigenous Fashion Week in Vancouver, still doing really profound, powerful things. Um, in a Western space, like Yves Saint Laurent, I would say is another big influence. He was a really strong colorist, and um, he was the first to put a black woman on the runway. He was the first to put women in pants. He created Pret-a-Porter, which is ready to wear. So he was really a revolutionary thinker. Also was the first to put contemporary art, bring that into fashion like we saw in the Mondrian dress. Another <coughs> major influence would be like Johnny Versace. Like I remember his very first show, like seeing that in real time in high school. And he was, such a performer, like he really understood the dynamics of the media and the dynamics in fashion. So he, he's just a really theatrical character. I could speak to him for quite a long time. So this is some of my work in my very first collection. 
So I, I thankfully it made L magazine, and L just earlier this week has has mentioned me to, as being one of five indigenous designers to watch. So yeah, once again, color, color is um, a really driving force in the work. Um, last year I was I started really on I started in the the east, so where sun rises and ceremony begins, I was really honoring fire. This year in the Cree medicine wheel. I'm focusing on earth metal and the color red. Dean Dory, she's a big supporter of my work. So this is a, a fitting that we had in her house. Um, yeah, she's the first black dean of design in the world and she, um, she teaches with me at OCAD University. This is Dr. Liza. So I mentioned earlier that I'm working on a collaboration. She's a, she's a foot doctor, so these these are like orthopedic high heel shoes that she's making like, ladies, you can run in these heels. But here what you're looking at is one of, you can go jogging in these puppies. What you're looking at here is a painted hide and then I laser cut the hide and you're seeing it as, um, as a poncho, worn by Dr. Liza, a drawing. This was my last collection presented just um, recently in Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Indigenous Fashion Week. So yeah, it was, it was really great to put on this show. So much has come forward. I specifically want to draw your attention to the work that's going to be on the right side. You'll see the, the um, you'll see that the, the spray paint is coming into the work. So my, my practice is starting to overlap. When I think about these, these um, kind of, these dots that I'm creating, they're my interpretation or my version of a spirit orb or an ancestral orb. And that's really, one, once again, I acknowledge kind of the visual language that Norval Morisot brought forward. And so, yeah, here's, here's Unpaktun or the bundle again. The installation, this was the installation that happened um, at the Toronto Art Fair that happened just in October 2022. And I'm presented alongside Audie Murray. So um, my Leticia Fazakas is a, she has a gallery in Vancouver and she represents me. She brought, brought forward this beautiful um, pipe bag. And so um, then Audie and myself made a work in response to that ancestral object. So yeah, this concludes my talk. I want to thank you all for your time and attention. Have a really good evening. So Anang, Anang and Maria, they um, came up with some, some paint, so a paint palette. Yeah. So now we're gonna draw for the lucky winner. Here so here comes, here comes the draw. We're gonna pick a name of the lucky winner of um, this, uh, this paint collection. So who, who's got their ticket numbers? I think it's gonna be this one. It's yes. so four four seven three zero six seven. Oh. Who is it? Who we got? Four. Oh, good. We have a lucky winner. This is amazing. So I've been, I've been asked to take uh, two or three questions. So if there is any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I also want to say that I've had some good experiences as young artists or other artists in the community. If there's any way that I could ever help you, please reach out in social media and I'll do my very best. So um, yeah, there's like I've got a lot of experiences writing grants. I've known, I've come to meet a lot of amazing curators such as Penelope and 
Caitlin, so yeah, please feel free to reach out in social media. Is there any questions about the install or my presentation tonight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the question was, what is some advice for someone initiating their first exhibition? I would say risk. I think there's five hours of indigenous research. So look that up. And, and I've created, like, in my practice and process, I'm really interested in two key things that kind of spoke to my bundle of knowledges. So conceptually, what is your work saying, right? And then take a risk. How are we presenting our ideas? How are we making our work? And how do we make that exciting for audiences? So yeah, I would say in your first installation, take a lot of risk and yeah, bring, bring forward something fresh. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, happy to connect you in any way I can. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, good. We like humor. Mm. Well, I think like, you know what? I really, um, I really think it's super important to make artwork that's relatable, and I think it's super important to also be a relatable person. So, like, I think. Um, yeah, we all like we all increase in our kind of vocabulary. So I guess through my own journey in education, I've learned the art speak. But I remember like some of my biggest breakthroughs were actually about like decreasing the intent to like um, wow the super intellectual elite and connect with community. You know what I mean? I'm really. I, I'm really interested in, in people, not just a few people, but as many as possible. So yeah, I think trying to be relatable and keeping that in mind is, is, is a goal of mine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Is there, do you, do you have a question? Any other questions? Yes, one more question. We'll take this final question. Oh. That's a really good question. So yeah, so the question is, what is the difference between the work you present as a visual artist and fashion? Like the body versus architectural space, right? And so like, it's funny because I kind of do see these things as dress for architecture. Like we've just kind of like activated space with all of these things. Right? I love that some of these things hit the ground, that some reach the sky, you know, that are suspended. Um, I like that something's animated, right? When I think, so when I think about space, I'm thinking about those things. When I'm thinking about fashion, I'm thinking about movement, right? That, so dynamic, I would say, is central in my aesthetics, in both my visual as well as my fashion art pro practice. But yeah, movement would definitely be that differentiator in, in the fashion work. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again. Have a super night. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, so we are done for the night. I have to say, I love how everyone looks in front of that animation, in front of that video art. It's really great. So when I just want to ask all of you, the next time the gallery invites you to come to something, please come. And the second thing, I do want to thank you for coming. This is a sort of thing that can happen in a space like this and that we strive for. Um, so you're part of it. Uh, so I thank you for being part of it. And um, I'd like to...
remind or ask you all to come back because once we move the chairs and the equipment out, you will get the full feeling of Jason's exhibit. That's our problem when we set all of us up in here. We sort of change how the exhibit feels. So it's up until March, come back. All of these shows are up. Come back when it's quiet or come back when there's a school tour in here or come back at, at you know a couple more times. And Jason, if you would like to move to Thunder Bay, we would welcome you. I think you would fit very well here, yeah. <laughs> okay, congratulations to all the artists and thanks again and good night. Come for refreshments. <laughs>